Give us the strength, give us the endurance, give us the fruits of the spirit to help us be the people of God that you have called us to be. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, Sister Rebecca. See you. 
the strength in my heart forever i'll run back into your love you are the strength of my heart forever my god your love is enough Thank you. 
hands to a grave, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I'm melting your peace, it's overwhelming. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So grateful to have Sister Becca back leading us in worship and even more grateful to know that everyone is healthy and doing excellent. A great way to start off the year 2020, 2022, excuse me, 2022. <laughs> Got to get used to saying that in this new year. Uh, so my brothers and sisters, did, when you look back at 2021, can you say that you're grateful that God has brought you through, even, even during the downs, the down times? Can you, can you say that you're grateful for 2021, that God has brought you through it to 2022? I know I can. I know I can. And as I think about 2022, what's, what's been on my mind the past week or so is, what does it mean to be in Christ? What does that mean? We, we hear it all the time in church. We see it in the scriptures. We say to be in Christ. But what does that mean? What does that mean for God? that we're in Christ? What does it mean for us that we are in Christ? What does it mean for the world that we live in for us to be in Christ? And over the next several weeks, I, I wanna explore that with you, if, if you will, if you'll join me. What, what it means for us to actually be in Christ. And, and being that, that this is a new year, uh, I, I believe that a good place to start would be the very beginning of our relationship with Christ. And, and that is that once we accept him as Lord and as Savior, my brothers and sisters, that we are instantaneously new creations. There's that word new again. New year. This, this new year, I'm going to be more mindful, and I hope you'll join me, uh, of walking in the spiritual truth that not only is this a new year, but I am a new creation in Christ. King James says a new creature in Christ. We, will, you, will you be more thoughtful about that in this new year? Will you be more intentional uh, in terms of living your life for Christ with the understanding that you are a new creature in Jesus Christ? Do I have any witnesses out there this morning? You, you, you hear me this morning. You are a new creature, a new creation in Jesus Christ. And whether you wanna say creation or, or creature, it really doesn't matter because what's most important is either way you're acknowledging that God is the creator. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. And it is that, and it is through Christ that he has made us new again. Join me in 2022, saints. This new year, I, I wanna walk in the spiritual truth that I'm in Christ. And while the year may be new, more importantly, in Christ, I'm new. And, and in Christ, you're new. And, and in Christ, they're new. Whoever desires to accept him as Lord and Savior is a new creation. I, I can thank God 
for the ups and downs of 2021. But this year, I'm looking forward because I realize that I'm new. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I, I'm new in God's eyes. I'm new. I need to know and walk like I'm new in my own eyes, though. Can I get a witness? Can, I think I can say the same for you. You need to know and walk like you're new in your own eyes. Our scripture this morning, our primary text this morning, comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 19. I'll be reading from the NIV version. Many of you I know are really familiar with this scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 19. The title of our message is, In Christ, I'm a new creation. Glory to God. If you know how important that is, something ought to be inside of you ought to be shouting when you hear me say that. In Christ, I'm a new creation. The old is gone in with the new. The new me is the better me because I'm in Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 16 and 19 says this. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Verse 17, watch this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. I feel good even just saying that. Verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. May God add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of this holy word. May he open our hearts and our minds to receive what he has for us individually and collectively, not only this morning, my brothers and sisters, but throughout the year. Again, the title of this message, In Christ, I'm a New Creation. And point number one is this. Point number one is this. This is something that I, I've really been discovering. Point number one is this. I'm new on the inside. Amen. In, in Christ, I'm new on the inside. I, I, I'm thinking about, what was the movie, Sister Ray? Waiting to Exhale, I, I believe. Whitney Houston, I think it's Whitney Houston's character. She says something like, and I'm probably chopping it up, but she says, child, if you ugly on the inside, <laughs> then you ugly on the outside. Can I get a witness out there? You know what I'm talking about. But in Christ, my brothers and sisters, I knew on the inside. Let's look again at verse 17. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Praise God. The old is gone, the new is here. And so it, it, let me tell you some wrong thinking about that. You may think the old is gone, the new is here, but, but wait, God, I'm still wearing the same clothes. That hasn't changed. I, I live in the same neighborhood, that ain't changed. Still got some conflicts in my family, that hasn't changed. There's still some stuff that I'm trying to work through, that hasn't changed. I'm frustrated about the times that we live in and it doesn't seem like that's changing, but oh, my brothers and sisters, the change that God is talking about, the newness that God is talking about is a change that takes place on the inside. Oh my goodness, I'm starting to discover the importance of knowing this spiritual truth. It's not about what's happening on the outside with Christ, but it's about what's changed on the inside. I love the song and she says, a wonderful change has taken over me. 
Matthew 15, 17 to 20. Watch this. I'm going to tell you a little more what I mean about this change on the inside, this newness, how, how I'm going to be new this year in Christ. Matthew 15, 17 to 20. He says, don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. Jesus is pointing to what's on the inside of us, my brothers and sisters. He says, and, and these uh, defile them. Verse 19, for out of the heart, the inside, brothers and sisters, he says, come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person. But eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Christ is saying it's not these rituals and routines. It's something on the inside that, that makes you turn to wickedness. It's, it's the things on the inside that keep you from walking in the newness of the Lord. Am I making sense to anybody that this morning? Yeah, my clothes ain't changed. My neighborhood ain't changed. The conflict in my family ain't changed. The things I'm frustrated about haven't changed, but because my mind is set on how I'm a new preacher in Christ, I'm gonna listen to his words. And although my outward situation hasn't changed because I'm a new creature, my thinking and how I feel about stuff on the inside, help us Lord, the inside has changed. I thank God for my wife helping me earlier in the week I was impatient about some things in my thinking. I was frustrated about some things. I wasn't content. She said, Lance, contentness, that, that's something that can only come from on the inside. Oh, my goodness. I, I didn't say it, but all I could think was amen. She was right. God, it's the wonder. Thank you, God, for the wonderful change that we can cling to on the inside. I'm trying to help somebody be new in 2020, in 2022, glory to God, 2022. <laughs> I want to walk in the new. And that's going to require me to know and walk in the truth that I am changed on the inside. I got to work on my thoughts. I got to work on what's on my heart. I got to be more mindful that my intentions are godly intentions not for the sake of just checking something off the box, but because I love Christ. Glory, because I love Christ, I'm gonna serve him, starting with how I'm thinking and feeling and responding on the inside. Colossians 3, 12 says this. Help us, Lord, I see the witnesses, amen, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the encouragement. This morning, Colossians 3.12 says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Paul says, clothe yourselves. You know, in other words, it's something that you wouldn't have on unless you intentionally put it there. Can I get some help today? Clothe yourself. You're not automatically going to always be bent to be compassionate. You're not always going to want to, to, to exercise and practice kindness. Your flesh doesn't want to be humble. Uh, your flesh in the world is not encouraging you to be gentle and practice patience. It starts on the inside, my brothers and sisters. You got to be intentional about clothing yourselves with these things. Aren't you a new creature? Glory to God. The old you didn't, wouldn't have cared about being compassionate, but the new you should. The old you wouldn't have worried about being patient or, and, and waiting on the Lord, but the new you ought to be concerned about following in these ways that God has encouraged us and taught us how to do through his word. Am I making sense to anybody? Instead of focusing on the clothes I'm wearing on my back, I'm thankful for the opportunity in Christ, as Paul writes, to, to now clothe myself with mercy kindness, gentleness, humility, and patience. 
my, my physical neighborhood ain't changed, uh, but my mind is now focused on the spiritual neighborhood that awaits me in eternity. Am I making sense to anybody? And instead of allowing the conflict at the job or the conflict in the family or the conflict in the country to get me all shook up this year because I realized that I knew I, I can let God handle things and walk in his peace amongst people instead of allowing the anger or the sadness to overcome me. It's something, my brothers and sisters, on the inside. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Don't, don't, don't you realize you're new? You're new in 2022. Glory to God. We have a Savior. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him with, what, with what's on our hearts in 2022. We got to understand, saints, that, that this newness in Christ, it, it doesn't mean that we're reformed. That's what some of us think. It doesn't mean that we're reformed. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that we're rehabilitated. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're re-educated. But rather, according to the scriptures, it means we're recreated, my brothers and sisters. That's what it means. The old you is gone. You've been recreated, a new creation. Lord. Uh, help us in 2022. The old, the old us is gone. Let, let, let the old lands die. Let the new lands in Christ be the one that lives. We're now living in union with Christ, and that requires uh, a, a completely new creature. Am I making sense to anybody this morning? New creatures. New creatures. Old is gone. Bring on the new. New creatures. Let the old stuff go. Glory to God. Watch what Paul says here in Colossians 2, 6 to 7. Colossians 2, 6 to 7. He says, so then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught in overflowing with thankfulness. My goodness, that, that's powerful. Just as you receive Christ Jesus, continue to live your lives in him. Walk, walk in that newness that you received when you, were, when you accepted Christ. Walk in that newness, the old stuff is dead. Walk in the newness of Christ. I wanna read it again from, from, the, from the message version. Watch this, from the message version, Colossians 2, 6 to 7. It says this, my counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You receive Jesus Christ, the master, now live him. <laughs> I love that. Now, now live him, live Christ. Paul even says in Philippians, to live is Christ. Can I get a witness? To die is gain, to live. It's Christ. He goes on to say, you're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And, and let your living spill over into Thanksgiving. I, I'm learning now, my brothers and sisters, that, that Thanksgiving is the key to a lot of things. Thanksgiving can turn sorrow into joy. Thanksgiving can turn hopelessness into hope. Thanksgiving can turn fear into faith. My brothers and sisters, let's walk in the newness of Christ in the new year and let our living spill over into Thanksgiving, which is something that starts on the inside of the believer. Point number two. Point number two. Not only, not only does being in Christ mean I'm new on the inside, but being in Christ means I have a new perspective. Thank you, Lord. I, I think I, I'm faithful that, that God is gonna help someone's perspective this morning in 2022. In Christ, we have a new perspective. Verse 16 from our text, 2 Corinthians 5. 16, watch this, preaching straight from the text. He says, so from now on, 
we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Paul saying we, we have a different perspective now. We, we don't have this worldly point of view. Now, now, now our view is through, the, is through the eyes, through the lens, so to speak, of Christ. What we need to understand is that be, before Paul's conversion, Paul had thought of Christ, uh, Jesus as, as merely a human being. That, that, that's what he's saying here. But now that he knows that Christ died on the cross for everyone, and, and that all those who live should live for Christ. Paul insists that he and all other believers should no longer understand things from a humanly, worldly point of view. The, the lens that I look through, the world, should be a Christ-like lens. That's what it means to be new in, in Christ. I, I need to look at things through God's perspective, through the lens of Christ through the lens of the cross and all that it means. We, we, we have a new perspective. Earlier this week, I heard someone say, there won't be no change if you don't make room for change. My, my brothers and sisters in 2022, are, are you going to make room for God's perspective? You, you're gonna have to get rid of your perspective. You're gonna have to decrease so that God's perspective can increase for you in 2022. We, we have a new perspective. We, we now, being in Christ, we have a new covenant with God. We, we read that uh, before we took communion this morning, a new covenant with God based on grace. Uh, we have a new spirit in Christ. We have a new heavenly community in, in Christ. And, and please help us understand that this isn't just a superficial change that we're that we're that we're experiencing that will quickly uh fade away but this is eternal my brothers and sisters they're, they're, in christ we are a, we are a part of a new order of all creation under christ's authority in 2022 will your new perspective uh, uh with christ as the head guide you in the new year and, and that's what paul is saying new creations we now have new perspectives and so maybe you're saying, preacher, tell me a little bit more about the new perspective. I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked. Let's back up just a couple of verses. Second Corinthians 5, 14 to 15. New perspective for the new creature in the new year, 2022. This is what it says, verse 14. For Christ's love compels us. That's deep right there. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Hmm. And he died for all that those who live, watch this, should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. That, that's the new perspective my brothers and sisters, that, that we no longer live for ourselves. This is some good preaching. I know the Holy Spirit is pleased. We no longer live for ourselves, but we live for Christ who died for us and was raised again. Glory to God. That, that, that new perspective, the, the new perspective is that because I have received God's love for me, that this love compels me to now no longer live for myself, which is the old me, but to live for Christ, which is the new me. Oh my goodness. John sums it up. He just says, we, we love him because he first loved us. <laughs> Glory to God. That, that, that's that thankfulness we were talking about earlier. The, the old me wanted to chew people out. But the new me, the new creature, submits to Christ and considers what he wants me to do instead because he is the head of my life. Am I making sense this morning? That the old me wanted to rely on vices to help get me through. The new me submits and depends on Christ. 
Am I making sense to y'all this morning? In, 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 instead of the smoke break, maybe I need to read my word. In, in, instead of worrying, maybe I ought to start praying instead. In, instead of complaining, maybe I ought to give thanks. My, my perspective is different now because I'm living for Christ. Oh, I know, I, I know that's a mouthful, but my brothers and sisters, that ought to be the goal. What's the point in saying we're new if that's not what we're striving for? And, and I'm so grateful that we have a God who will be with us every step of the way. I got to walk in the newness of Christ. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. If I'm making sense to you this morning, type in new. Put new in the chat if I'm making sense to you this morning. Galatians 2.20 says this. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. <laughs> but Christ lives in me. Oh, that, is, that ought to be revelation. We're living for Christ. The life I now live in the body I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There it is again. There it is again. God's love for me through Christ it is what it compels me to live for him. It's what compels me to love. It, it, it what com it's what compels me uh, to forgive. It's what compels me to repent. It's what compels me to remind myself that I'm walking in the newness of God because he loved me. Come on, somebody. Oh, my goodness. See, even as I'm preaching, God is speaking to me more than he was when he was giving me the message. It, it, his love it, it, it is the avenue through, through which I serve him. He's put that love to me, and then I give it right back to him by living for him. Oh, am I making sense to anybody this morning? Man, that, that, that's love like none other. That's love like none other. I love my wife. I know my wife loves me, but she can't love me like that, like Christ. She, I can't love her uh, like, like Christ. I love all of my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I, I love my, my family and friends, but I can't love y'all like Christ. Y'all can't love me. Uh, like Christ, man, it's his love for me that compels me to live for him. Oh, we could wrap it up. We could wrap it up right there, but I'm going to finish. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Romans 8, 35 to 30. Remember, y'all, I'm just trying to remind you who you are in Christ. You are deeply loved in Christ. Deeply loved in Christ. New creation in Christ. The old you is gone. Somebody needs to forgive themselves for something they said or did. Let it go. There's a new you now. Walk in that newness. Trust in the Lord. Romans 8, 35 to 39 says this, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or, persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Then he pauses before he gets to verse 37. Then he pauses. And this is what I mean by that new perspective. Uh, uh, we, could, we could take the, the perspective of verse 36, or we could take the new perspective of verse 37. He says, no, wait a minute. And all these things, even when we are like sheep set up for the slaughter, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Glory to God. That's the gift of being new in Christ. I'm more than a conqueror. Whatever life throws my way, I already have the victory. Why? Because I'm in Christ. Oh, my goodness. The victory has already been won because I'm in Christ. Oh, there are some things I need to let go in 2022. I need to let it go. I need to let some things go so I can let Christ live inside of me. Verse 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, 
neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of, of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There is nothing you can name that can keep me from the love that God has for me in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to be praising God right now. There's nothing that can get in the way of his love for you. The old mistakes that you've made can't get in the way. What people think of you can't get in the way. The fact that you're struggling, it can't get in the way. Sickness in your body can't get in the way. Trouble in your finances can't get in the way. There's nothing that can overcome the love that Christ has for you. Thank you, Lord. New me, new perspective, new year. Ephesians 4, 17 to 30. This is a lot of reading, saints, but this speaks to the message. I, I want to read the whole thing. Ephesians 4, 17 to 30. I encourage you, let God speak to you through the text right here in light of you being a new creature in 2022. This is what it says. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Remember something on the inside. Verse 19 having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. Verse 20, that however is not the way you learned, Paul says. In other words, you're different. You're now new. Verse 21, when you heard about Christ and were taught in him, in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught, watch this, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitudes of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Verse 25, therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must, no must steal no longer and must work, doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Verse 29 and 30, he closes. He says, do not let any unwholesome talk, help us, Lord, come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. There is a new us in Christ, my brothers and sisters. Let us remember that in 2022. Point number three, and we'll be done. Thank you, Lord. Not the new, not the old life, but the new. Not the old ways, but the new. The new me lives for Christ. Point number three, I have a new message. I have a new message in Christ. 2022, new year, new me, and I have a new message. Verse 18 to 19, let's go back to the text. Second Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. Again, he says, all this is from God who, gave, who, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. 
powerful text right there. One more time, I wanna read that again in the message version. It's playing out a little bit clearer for me. It gives me a little something else to add on to. It says this, all this comes from, God, from the God who settled, watch this, settled the relationship between us and him and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. Holy Spirit ought to be pinching you right now. God put the whole world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. That is the new message for the new creature in 2022. But Paul says, I I'm only a new creature because God intervened. I would have been stuck in the old. Come on, anybody who can, who can look back at some of the stuff, the old stuff you, you was doing and it still tries to pull on you from time to time. Paul is encouraging you this morning saying you're free now because you're in Christ. You've been reconciled to God. That, that's the new message, so to speak. That, that could even be the new song, so to speak. I've been reconciled to God through Christ. That's my new message. One of reconciliation. But Paul says this is too good of a message to keep to myself, that God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself. Reconcile means to make things right. Reconcile means to restore harmony. So, so we're telling others about a God who, who we've been reconciled with, not because we're so holy, but because he's so gracious. Oh my goodness. We, we, ought, to be, we ought to be bragging on the grace of God. We, we ought to be bragging on the mercy of God. We ought to be boasting on the goodness of the Lord because we've received this new message of reconciliation. Help us, Lord. I, I had a client uh, earlier this week. Uh, he sent a little encouragement. I think he was trying to encourage himself, but he ended up encouraging me. He says, 2022, it's a new year. He, he says, a rising tide lifts all boats. <laughs> and so when I first read it, I, I, I was like, what is he talking about? A rising tide lifts all boats? I don't want no tide coming my way in 2022, so I had to do some research. And, and, and after I studied up on it, I realized, no, that's a good thing. He's just talking about the nature of boats sitting on the tide. The tide will raise every single boat up. I wanna let somebody know this morning that the tide that raises all boats is Jesus Christ. And we can trust him in 2022 with this new message that he's given us, the tide that raises all boats. The old me in my sin was an enemy of God at odds with him, but in, but in Christ, I've been reconciled. I, I have a new me and a fresh start with the Lord. I'm no longer an enemy of God, but because of his son, I'm a friend, a friend of the Lord and a co-heir with Christ. Will your new self remember that? throughout 2022 saints. Amen, Brother Patterson, no longer a slave to sin. Will your new self remember that in 2022? You've been reconciled to God. And if you believe that he's really that good, then you too ought to be committed to that message of reconciliation. Not only you reconciling with others, but you telling them about the God who reconciled the world back to himself through the blood of Jesus Christ. The enemy of panic is preparation. Be prepared in 22, my, 
my brothers and sisters, because the enemy does not want you to walk in that newness. Your flesh does not want you to walk in that newness. The world does not want you to walk in that newness, but be prepared to continue to, to continue to walk in the favor of God amongst God and others. And not because people deserve it, because you know that you didn't deserve it either, but because the love of Christ compels you because of how he has made you new again. Loving and obeying God in 2022, because you know that he first loved you and not just the churchy language glory to God, but will you stop holding grudges? Will you empathize with others' perspectives? Will you build an even more intimate relationship with God as Jesus inferred, not because you're trying to keep the law by washing your hands, but because deep down in your heart, you're fully devoted to the Lord. Will your life in 2022 be a living sermon about this message of reconciliation? We have all the God-given tools to do so. We've been made new on the inside. We have a new perspective and we have a new message. Come on, Chorus. is our God hallelujah how great is our God so great <laughs> greater than we could ever even imagine a benediction scripture this morning I believe comes from first timothy put it on the screen here in a moment first timothy chapter 1 verse 17 and i will be reading from the niv version it's our prayer today here at compassionate church that perhaps something that was said, something that was preached, something that was prayed allowed you to come closer to God. It's even our prayer that if you've never accepted Christ as Lord, that you did today or that you would choose to today. And if you made that decision, we'd like for you to reach out to us, let us know. Or if there's concerns about what the steps are or what to do, we love to walk you through that as well. Or maybe you're like me and in 2022, you wanna be more intentional about living as the new you. It's our prayer that you would remember the points of the sermon, that we're new on the inside in Christ, that we have a new perspective 
with Christ. And that we have a new message in Christ, one of reconciliation in 2022 and beyond. First Timothy 1, 17. For those in the Zoom meeting, I'm gonna ask that you would unmute and we can read it all together. First Timothy 1 and 17. This is what it says. Let's read it together, saints. Now, now to the to king, king eternal, eternal. Immortal, immortal, invisible, invisible the, only the only God, God. be honor, honor and glory, and glory ever, and ever, 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 and ever, and ever. Amen. 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 And God bless and keep us all Amen. in 2022. Take care, saints. God bless everybody. Thank you.